Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Spin Tires, and today we are going to complete our epic journey with this load of logs. We've already done one epic journey with a load of logs. So we are at the moment way down here in this bottom corner down here. We're going to move all the way back up here along this road that we went on before. I'm not going to take this one along a different route. We went over here previously with our last load of logs and we came up all the way up through to there and up round. This time we're going to follow this road and we're going to come in here to this B66 and I'm going to go up round and we'll go to the other lumber mill. What I'd also like to do is take the C6317 over there all the way over to this garage. We're going to follow that road all the way over there, get that garage unlocked so we've got all of that done. And once we've done that, there is one other thing that I would like to do on this map before we actually finish. But what I'm going to do first is we're actually going to go up to this one up here and this is the one that we're going to do first because just in case we get any issues with the um, the game uh, crashing once we finish this thing up completely because I have had this before where we finish the map and I click that I want to, you you get an option that you can carry on playing if you want to and I've done that before, and then it's caused the game to crash. And I'm not quite sure why it crashes it, but it does. So rather than take that risk, we're going to go and do this bit first. And then once we've done this, then we will get the um, lumber to the lumber mill using the great big truck. Uh, the, the, you know, I, can't, I can never remember what that one's called. Just take a look. Uh, the E7429. Once we've done that, we Nope, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Um, once we've got the E... Something, something, 29, 7, 7, 4, 2, 9. So the 74, 29, back up here with the timber, and that's all done. Then, if the game will let us, there's one other thing that I want to try. Somebody suggested that it was something that they've done, and I thought, well, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. We'll see if we can do that, and we'll sort of see what the effect is, because it, it was the effect that they talked about that um, interested me the most, and... So that's what I'd like to look at. Now, this one here does look like it's going to struggle a little bit getting through the water with this trailer on. I think it's probably going to do all right. I don't think it's actually going to grind to a complete halt. We've got diff lock and all wheels and everything all sort of plowing along quite nicely. We could always run over to the other garage and we can get the K700 that's over there. You know, the big Kirovitz tractor with the loader arm on the back. We could go and get that one and we could stick it on the front of this one and we could tow it across the map. So that there is always that option. We can try and uh, we could try and do that. It could be quite an interesting approach to things to see if we can tow the two of them together. Um, although that's not actually... I would prefer not to do that. I would prefer to do something a little bit different. I'm going to bring this one over here. Now, the one thing that I don't think you can do is I don't think you can teleport machines to different garages. They always go to the closest garage, which is a little bit of a nuisance because of what I'd like to try later on. Um, we may have to just do a little bit of driving around in order to meet up at the right place. But we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. This does actually seem to be racing through here without any real problems at all. It slowed down a little bit in the water. But other than that, it doesn't seem to have slowed down at all. This is actually this is actually going really, really well. I'm quite surprised at just how sort of efficient this thing is at driving along. You, I, I always sort of I don't know if every everybody else is sort of guilty of this, but I tend to dismiss these smaller trucks as being you know fairly useless in on the most part. But it's, it's certainly for bigger loads like this. Um, I do tend to sort of overlook them. I think, oh, this is a small truck. It's not going to be able to do very much. So I'll ignore that one, and I'll go for something much bigger and more impressive looking. And I am frequently surprised by the amount of power that these things can pack. I mean, look at this thing. He's absolutely caning it through here. He, he does slow down a bit on the mud because of the smaller wheels compared to the bigger machines. And, I'm at, you know, it's slightly less power, and it's a lighter vehicle as well. So it's, um, it is going to spin a bit more on the mud. But... Overall, it does actually seem to cope fairly well with it. It doesn't really seem to slow down very much at all. Um, it can just sort of power right on through. So if you're in the market for buying one of these machines, any of the machines that we see here in this game, don't overlook these ones here, These, these uh, this, this C, C something. I, I don't actually know what the truck is. Um, let's have a look. The C... Where is it? Oh, there, there it is. It's C6317. 
So yeah, I, I don't actually know what sort of truck it is. Uh, I don't know what the make and the model is or anything like that. Not a clue. And I wouldn't even like to hazard a guess. Not not even going to try. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know what they are, but yeah, don't don't rule them out. If if you're able to get one, don't don't rule it out completely. Uh, let's just unload that and we'll unlock this garage. Excellent, all done. Garage unlocked. And we'll back up here now. If you we, we'll just take a look. Uh, go like that. Activate the cockpit camera. This one has actually got a sleeper bunk in it as well, which is really awesome. Um, I imagine that the console there is uh, fairly simplified. Overall, this truck does actually look pretty comfortable inside. It doesn't look too bad. Compared to some of the trucks that we use in this game, this one looks pretty good. Um, with some, some of the ones that we've seen are fairly poor, fairly basic and distinctly uncomfortable looking when, when you sort of you, you're looking through the vehicles and, and trying to decide whether or not you should ever actually use them um, but anyway we're going to stop this one right here didn't want to do that I want to go to there and I want to go to stop engine like that then I want to go over here and I want to go all the way down here like this and I want to go to the E7429 like that this bad boy down here we are going to drive this one up the road I'm going to put all of the locks on Go. we, we go whole hog we'll do everything and we're going to chug this one up the road. This is going to be a little bit more steady than the other one. He, he does drive a little bit slower. Uh, what is lights? I don't actually know. I think that, yeah, we got... The lights are now on, not that you can actually tell. It's very, very dim, the lights. And this time of day here is, is very, very poor as well. It's, um, it's 19... Yeah, it's gone, gone 7 o'clock, so between now and half past 8, as it gets darker and darker, it just kind of looks dreary. Very, very dreary. But I'm sure we will cope. I'm sure we will get through this. I seen something the other day. I know this is set in the Siberian wilderness, and permafrost is like a big thing for Siberia. It kind of holds everything together. And I seen this thing where, in the last couple of years, there's been a lot more melting of permafrost, and it's a big problem right away across Siberia and also in northern Alaska as well you've got all these roads and everything and the base of these roads is basically you've got this soil that um, all the ice and that in the soil melts on a regular basis and then um, freezes over again in the winter but below that at a certain level down you've got land that never thaws out it's, it, that's why it's called permafrost it's permanently frozen it's melting in large areas it's melting and you can literally see these huge great big slow moving mudslides and the roads are buckling up and turning to you're just just turning to mush like that the roads are like practically disappearing in places and you've got these huge mile wide mudslides as massive massive great big areas of permafrost are sort of melted far lower than they had done in previous years and so you've got this mud sort of slide I mean obviously not right now it's in the middle of winter but it, it, last summer in summer 2017 um, this was going on quite a lot and it was absolutely fascinating to watch you see all of this mud sort of slowly sliding along the ground and not just in small areas not just like a small bit of a mudslide um, you know the size you know, like, like a river sort of just a little bit of mud moving around no you've got this massive whole hillsides just slowly sliding down you know further down the valley and just moving it's just constant pouring of mud as this permafrost slowly thaws out and what was essentially a swamp is coming turning back into a swamp instead of being solid and having you know, everything frozen into like pretty much rock uh, the permafrost is solid you drill into the permafrost and you've got good solid anchors that melts and you got you're basically you're sat on a bog it's 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 not good it's really it's really not good it's absolutely amazing seeing some of the the video of how, what the effect it's having and also in alaska as well they got like some serious issues in alaska with the permafrost melting um with all the roads buckling up and that you look at some of the pictures and some of the video of the roads and what they're looking like now it's it's pretty surprising it's just I didn't realise that the permafrost was like such an important underpinning of everything, you know, whereas the rest of the world we just kind of, you know, the earth is the earth and it doesn't tend to move around very much. You get a little bit, little bit of unseasonable warmth and suddenly everything is all falling apart. It's, it's absolutely 
amazing just how reliant on the permafrost a lot of these areas actually are. So it's going to be interesting to see if that happens again this year or not. Um, well, I say interesting, it's actually quite terrifying for the people that live there because some of them actually their houses are busy like sliding away and that's, that's really not good. I, I really do feel for these people. Right, we need to just go and sleep the night a minute. So we're going to leave this vehicle right here. I'm going to actually switch it off a second. Uh, stop engine, there we go. And we go back onto here. Let's go to the B66 over here. If we go to this one here. And then we can skip the night, like that. Yep, 22 litres of fuel. See, this one's just staying parked here. And then we can jump back over to the E7429 over here. And we can start up again. See? It's very, very simple. It's a foolproof way of sleeping the night without actually draining fuel. I do not understand why sleeping the night in this game drains fuel. You turn the engine off and you still lose a load of fuel. That is one detail that I think should be addressed. I don't think that should stay as it is in the game. That, that's, that's one tiny little niggle for me. That The fact that with the engine off it still drains fuel. I'm quite sure what the logic... I mean, I, I suppose... Does it get like really cold so you'd expect to leave the engine running and in order to be able to stay warm through the night? I, can't imagine that though. Um, I don't know what the average temp. I think the average temperatures aren't. It, 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 it doesn't get below freezing through the summer. Right? It stays above freezing even if it does get quite cool at night time. Um, I have no idea. I genuinely have no idea. Uh, but anyway, yeah. The the whole thing with this permafrost. You've also got trees. Now I seen a video very recently of. Um, a huge great big mudslide it was coming down and sort of going over a road and the absolutely incredible thing about it was it was a big area of forest and all of the trees were moving loads of them were like falling over and sort of just getting sort of engulfed with the mud but loads more of them were just literally they were staying standing and they were just moving along it's just like the trees were going off for a walk it was quite bizarre it was like watching Lord of the Rings all over again because of the, um, the the trees just sort of moving along upright. I mean, it, eventually most of them did topple over, um, so the whole Lord of the Rings effect was kind of lost at that point. But um, you you get the idea, and that must be if if you live in an area like that and you're sort of you you've got these issues with. Now I want to be able to get around here, but I don't want to completely demolish my trailer either. There we go. If you live in an area that is reliant on permafrost as like the, the base support of everything, not only like the countryside, your house, the roads, all the infrastructure, everything is held in place and locked in place with permafrost, and then that permafrost starts melting and everything starts sort of disappearing, what do you do? I mean, that must be quite a, a worrying that must be a very concerning experience because you know suddenly well. What, what do you do to sort of replace the anchors that you were using? Uh, speaking of anchors... Hmm. Well, we're going in the right direction. We do need to go up that way, but... We may not necessarily be going very far with this one right here. I'm... I'm actually sinking further down into the mud. So it turns out that the permafrost here may be melting as well, because um, th this mud is getting very, very deep. Uh, let's have a look if we got anywhere that we can I don't think those are gonna hold us up Absolutely don't think those are gonna hold us up not even a little bit Well, it did move us a bit We did move a tiny tiny little bit on that uh, I want to do that that one Let's try that one because that might be a stump in which case it should hold a little bit better than what the last one did Yep. Those stumps are actually pretty powerful. If you can get hold of the stumps rather than the tree, the you know the, the upright trees, it does work quite well. Uh, I am I stuck on that? No, I'm not stuck on the tree there. Uh, oh, I see. I've got a branch right in front of me that's kind of not helping matters. I think that we have actually reached the limit of what this tree, this this tree, this truck is capable of doing. I I reckon that maybe this is it. This is actually it. We it is has met its match. Look, see, I'm pulling. 
We did get up through here before, but I think maybe I was just slightly... Oh, no, there we go. That probably didn't help. We had that tree sort of stuck in front of us. I reckon that was probably holding us up. Well, not holding... I reckon that was probably, like, a, a big cause of the problem. We had that tree stuck in front of the wheel, and then that was, like, uh, gripping into the ground. Um, if I actually use the winch, maybe that will bring us forward a bit more. we go it's working it's working kind of it's not working right okay uh i honestly did not expect this this is this is a genuine surprise to me let's turn that one off of there and we've got something up there i don't know what it is but hopefully it will do something for us let's um let's keep going let's keep pulling forward oh there we go that's more like it let's keep going if I can get close enough to that one, then I can take it off, and hopefully we'll be able to now just keep chugging forward. Nope. No chugging. Okay, that it, it doesn't help that the trailer is absolutely grounded right up to its axles in the mud. That's probably not going to help the situation in even the slightest little bit. So we go to here. That is that an actual live tree? No, that's a dead tree. That's not going to do us any good at all. Uh, that there looks like it might be something that we can use. Let's turn it off of here. And start going forward again. And then we pull the winch. The winch is our only saviour right now. So, this truck does have its limits. I am actually quite pleased to find that this truck does have limits. I, do, I wouldn't want it to actually be completely 100% invincible. Uh, now, I got that one. I don't have any more winch. Oh, this, this is not good. This is a bad thing. I've got no more winch sources up here. I want one. I want to click to that tree. Let's try that tree over there. Maybe that can help us just a little bit. We've just got to go forward a bit more, I think, and then we'll be able, we'll, we'll sort of be all right. We're, we're getting very close to being able to do this. It's going to pull me over that way. Maybe just pulling me a little bit sideways is going to help. Apparently not. Apparently that's not going to help at all. The tree's pulling over. Nope. It's not doing a great deal. Okay. Uh, I want to be able to like go to one of these. Look. I, I got nothing here. I got that winch destination there. And even just pulling on that one. Turn that off of there. Uh, I'm pulling. The, the winch is pulling, but I think it's too close now. This is not good. What am I supposed to do? I can't unhitch the trailer. That's, that's that's just giving up. Have I got anything over that side? I haven't really looked over that side, have I? So let's let's try over this way. I got that one, and I think that is. Oh no, that's ooh. This might do it because sometimes when you're getting stuck, if you can pull the thing sideways, that really does help. So let's just turn that one over there as far as it'll go. And then start winching. Look, look at that. Look at that. See, the, the action of dragging you sideways in real life, if you get stuck, that can really, really help. Um, I have actually helped to get tractors completely unstuck by doing just that, by yanking them sideways rather than just forwards. And it's amazing how much of a difference that can actually make. Right, we've got a small tree up there. And I'm hoping now that just the forward action will be enough. Um... Okay, I, I broke I broke the winch point. That's, that's not good. Maybe that one will do it. I genuinely didn't expect to get absolutely and hopelessly stuck like this. I really thought that this truck would be able to get through here. I'm wondering if going through here once before has had an effect on it, or if we just got really, really lucky last time we came through and just sort of happened to get all the right places when we were driving. Oh, Oh, I think we've done it. I don't want to speak too soon, but I do believe we have done it. I think we have gotten through at last. That was that was pretty close. There was a point back there where I couldn't find a winch point that I genuinely thought we weren't going to make it. And here we go. We can get back up there. I think we should have gone that side of the trees, but it doesn't matter. We're through them now. And we're back on the slightly more solid ground. As long as that whole permafrost thing doesn't happen to us. And round we come. 
So if anybody watching my videos actually lives in or near a permafrost zone, have you heard of any of these goings on? Have they affected you personally? I would absolutely love to hear a little bit about it because I've seen like a couple of news stories about it and it seems, it's one of those things that seems really interesting. Um, and I say interesting, interesting because, you know, you've, you, I don't know anything about permafrost. I've never had to live with permafrost. I don't, I don't know the first thing about it. And also interesting because it's quite an unusual event. This this definitely an unusual thing. And I'm not trying to make light of this for the people that are seriously affected because there are quite a lot of people who are being seriously, seriously affected by this. Like, literally, their homes are sliding off down mountainsides. It's quite a awful thing to have happen to you. So if anybody has actually been personally affected by this in any way, I would love to hear about it. I would love to hear if this is like a... Is this like a really unusual thing or is this something that is just dealt with every, you know, every, every like few years? Um, it's something that is kind of dealt with living in zones like that and then it will freeze back up again and life carries on as normal. It's, it's sort of, what, what, are you look, what, what are you looking at here? I'd love to hear a few more details about this and sort of what's going on and what, whether it's really unexpected or if it's kind of a generally kind of an expected thing that is a just an inconvenience that you grow used to living with um because i know the different places in the world you have various inconveniences that other people in the world sort of look at and think oh wow um how do you even cope with that and then the people that live there and they deal with it on a daily basis are like well it's just life that's, that's just what happens it's health that's just the way things are um and that always fascinates me as well is um the way that some people can just li just live with things that other people in the world are just like horrified at even the thought of it it's just it's it, it, the extremes is living in these different extremes so if anybody does live in that area please comment let me know are you being affected by this is this you know nothing to do with your region whatsoever and it's as cold as it's ever been and um, i would really love to hear about that now we get to our lumber mill. This is going to be... It's going to say the map is complete. We're going to carry on because there's one more thing that I would like to do before we finish up this um, episode. We're going to go in here. We've also got plenty of time to do it. So we unload there. Eight points. Thanks. That's all right. We can return or we can continue playing. So we've now completed the game balance casual. We've basically unlocked another star. Watch points, all of them. Garages, all of them. Trucks, all of them. Fuel consumed, 1,400 litres. Times rescued, three. Oh, that's the times... Yeah, we're going to continue playing. That's the times that we've jumped to the... Um, jumped to a garage. And one of those times was an accident. We didn't actually mean to do it. So we, we can say two instead of three. Um, and we didn't actually need to be rescued. It was a deliberate um, move rather than... We got completely and hopelessly and utterly stuck and we were unable to continue any further. So I'm, I do at least have that on my side. So my next task is I would like to get over to the other garage that we unlocked first. And once we get over there, I then want to come back this way. Um, dragging something with me. Now, which is the best way to go through here? I think I want to go up this way slightly and then through. And then we can go whizzing up the road towards the garage. I'm leaving this trailer on the back. That one is staying there. And there's something that I wanted to try. I can't actually... I think I remember how to do this. But I don't actually remember fully how to do this. So we'll have to see when we get over there. I want to get to the other garage. So I'm going to drive over there a minute. And I'll meet you there. And there is the garage. We've got a couple of little bits that we need to do to get the garage thing ready. And then I'm hoping that we can get started on this. So I just want to bring this one first in here and I want a bit of weight on it. It seems quite light on the ground at the moment which is not what we want. So I need to put this one on here just like that and try and decide what I should put onto it. We got the fuel system that is unavailable. I will take that one off and we can have the short log trailer, trailer hitch, utility trailer which is that one. That's, that's not excuse me. Uh, that's not very heavy. Garage trailer. Hmm. I'm actually thinking that we're going to do that. We're going to do the garage semi-trailer. So we'll go with... Um, I need to put that one... Take that one off a minute. And then I want to put the trailer hitch on. And then I want to put the garage semi-trailer on like that. That is the one that we're going to be using. 
So I'll bring this one on over. This is quite a big trailer. We've used this one before. This is the one that we used when we first started this map. So we'll bring that one up there. And this is also quite a difficult one to use as well. This is one of the bigger ones that we've got. And yes, we'll go that way round, I think. So we'll leave that one there a second. Uh, hang on. Advanced. Stop engine. Right. Take it off of there. And then we want to go back over to the C6317. So we'll go to this one and just take the park brake off. We want to turn this bad boy round. And I want to get this one loaded up as well. So I need a something on the front and then something on the back. And we'll probably go... I think the garage and the garage trailer is probably the heaviest setup that we can get for this one as well. So that's what we'll go with this one. Uh, we'll go garage trailer like that and we'll go garage parts like that. So that's probably the heaviest setup that we can do. So we take this one over this way. Like this. And then I get to that point. Now... I want to go here and on to the winch destination. I think winch truck switch to pull switch to drive oh that one's starting its engine up right I want to go to advanced and I want to change truck I can't change truck alright I'll leave this one running a second and I need to switch over to the front one. Go to you. Like this. So what I want to do is... I'm pretty... If I have that one going... No, the one at the, the one at the back at the moment isn't actually doing anything. The I, My idea is that I want to be able to tow a truck with this truck. That's what I want to be able to do. So we're going to go like that. And I'm going to go there. And join you onto there like that. And then... So we'll just go drive... Winch truck drive. Switched to pull. Let's try that a minute. I think that is the right way that I want to do it. Yes. Right, so the one behind us is going to drive as well. And that should help us to sort of get through the mud and everything. If I back that one up. Yeah, the one behind us backs up as well. Right, that's, that's good. That's, that's kind of good. Uh, so we start driving off through here. I'm going to go to this front truck here. And I've got the one behind us driving as well. So it's going to sort of help drag everything through the mud. And what I was going to do was we're going to switch it over. And the reason I want to do this is I want to see what the fuel consumption is like. Okay, that is not what I wanted. I didn't want that one to be dragging into the trees like that. Uh, I've got a small tree here. That's not really going to be much of a problem. But the one behind us has decided that going into that tree is the best thing to do. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is the, the really what you want to be doing, truck behind us. I think maybe you want to reassess how you're doing things in life. Can I drag it through the tree? I'm trying to. I'm trying to drag it through the tree. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, if I go like this, maybe I can get it to go slightly different. Drag that one round that way as well. Turn that one. Backing up a bit. Is it going to... I don't think it's going to. I think that we've... I think it's decided that it's got to go through that tree, which is... That's not helpful. That's really not you. And it also seems to be sliding the trailer around. Oh, this is useless. This is absolutely useless. Right. Uh, we need to go to plan B here, I think. I don't think that we can get that tree to fall over. That tree is, like, stuck in between the two of us right now. And I'm not going to be able to drag it over. It's 32 litres of fuel a minute at the moment. Trying to drag that one through there. And that tree ain't coming down. That tree is not coming down. Okay, I need to try and back this one up. Except that every t because I've moved over so much, the trailer has actually slid completely in the wrong direction. And it's not helped the one behind it either. Okay, so new plan. We're, we're going to go on to here. I'm going to just take that one off a minute. I'm going to drive you forward. Put you over here. There, see, it's right down to 20 litres of fuel a minute at the moment. It's, it is very expensive on fuel to drive this thing around. We go to this one and take the park brake off a minute. 
And we'll move this one off to the side slightly. We'll try again. No damage, though. It hasn't actually damaged even though it's trying to drag it through that tree. It, does, it hasn't done no damage to it whatsoever. So we get to there, and then we can switch back to the front one like this. And I want to go to winch there and onto that one like that. This time, I'm just going to go to pull. I'm just going to see what it's, gonna, what it's like just dragging the truck behind us. Let's take the park brake off and see what it's like. Okay, with 28 litres of fuel. I'm, it's, it's the fuel consumption thing that I'm curious about. How much fuel is it going to take dragging that one behind us like this? It's certainly using a lot, and it's also quite amazing that it's still dragging it. Is that garage trailer going to fall over? Not quite. It was close, though. That was pretty close. It did very nearly tip over. If I can just line that one up, I want to go roughly that way. Keep dragging it. The back of the trailer here is sliding sideways. It's trying to keep everything in a straight line. It's actually really, really cool. I didn't think it would be this powerful. I mean, yes, we're not going through a lot of mud at the moment. We've got these trees coming up. This is certainly going to slow things down a bit. This is going to make a difference. Look at that line there. That is fantastic. Towing it right through all the mud. That is brilliant. I really didn't think it would work as well. I didn't think that this thing was that strong. And he says as it grinds to a complete halt. Really? Okay, we're going to have to change things over a little bit. We're going to go to advanced. And we're going to switch that over to drive. And then we'll stop. And then we keep going again. Oh, I know what's happened. My trailer is grounded. That is what's happened. Look. My trailer here has completely grounded itself. And it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, if I go advanced like this and go on to here. Can I drag it up. I wonder if I can do it like this. I don't think I can have both of them together. Let me pull that one in place. Like that. That's going to drag me forward a bit. I don't want to be over too far. I'm going to come around this way a bit. There we go. Okay, that's working. That's working quite nicely. Now, I need the truck behind me uh, hitched on again. So we go like that and switch to you. And you're going to stay on drive this time. And I'm hoping you'll work. Yes. Now it's actually working. We've got we've gotten over the little hump in the ground. The rest of it should be all tickety-boo. Look, see, that one's dra dragging up over there without any problems whatsoever. If I try and sleep the night right here, that is going to drain all of my fuel. i got 98 litres of fuel right here. That's all i got left. We're not going to be getting very far. Because I don't have any spare fuel on this one or the other one. It's the garage ones. They, unfortunately, I don't think, have any actual fuel on board. A little bit of an inconvenience. But we'll, we'll do a little bit of nighttime driving just to finish up this episode. Because we don't, I don't normally do this because it, it does actually come out quite dull. But I'm hoping that you can at least sort of see something interesting with it. So now I need to get round here. And we've got another slight hump in the road as well. That could slow us down yet further. Are we going to be able to get round there? And... Is the truck behind us going to get round those trees? It's pulling our trailer sideways slightly. I think it's going to hit that tree behind us. It is. It's sl the trailer is slight. No, it's just managed to scrape past. Just. But only just. That was actually pretty close. And we've got another tree there. If I go in a roughly straight line this way, he's, oh, he's, he's just shaved that tree. And I've hit this one up here. Down to 70 litres of fuel. Let's just turn this one in round that way and keep going. There we go. Right. Now, we've got the raised road here. I don't really want to slide off the side of it. But at the same time, I'm also very conscious of the fact that that trailer behind us, I think, just got caught on a tree. But no, we've managed to slide it on through. It's quite surprising how well this one can keep it all moving. We're going to get down to the river down there. That's going to be sort of our ultimate test is can we drag it right through the river? I'm thinking we're going to even try and avoid the road as well. We're just going to go in a straight line. I'll just keep going straight right down through there. What's it going to do? We can bust through these little trees here. The one behind us is it's getting very, very dark now. It's, it's, get, it's a bit of a struggle to see what we're doing. We're, we're sort of doing all right. The one behind us, I think, is slowing us down a bit. 
And this is the bit. Here we go. Now we're going to get really stuck. Really get slowed down. We'll get into the river okay, I think. But I think we're going to struggle to get out of the river. Actually, it doesn't look like we're even going to get into the river at all. We're just, it's just going to stop completely. Nope. Nope. It's still moving. Is it going to do it? Is it actually going to do it? I think it is. There we go. Down into the river and stuck. I told you we'd get stuck. Told you. It's just not going to do it. It's going to ground out there completely. The... Yeah, the front of it is just a little bit too deep right here. I wonder if we can... Win if we try and winch ourselves through from here... Uh, oh, there is a winch source over there. Problem with winching us... Ourselves is... Right, I'm winching. It's whether I can get the vehicle on the back... Back onto us when we finish. Let's get that one forward a bit. There we go. Right, I'm going to stop there and... Winch again. Go like that. And then I want to go onto the back. Select destination. There. Yes, that's what I wanted. And then we go. We start pulling. Are you going to get through? Come on. I... No, it's not. <laughs> Absolutely stuck at the moment. I wonder if we can pull... If I pull the winch up to get the one behind us going... Is that one able to push us? I'm still pulling that one. I'm, I'm using the winch to sort of pull us forward. And I'm still... I'm st I've still got the winch pulling at the moment. I'm pressing the button for pulling the winch. So the truck behind us should have come all the way up. And I'm thinking... I think that is actually contributing to it moving forward a little bit. I think it's actually pushing us. Um, maybe not. All right. Uh, one last attempt. And then we're going to have to go. All right. We put that one on there. Winch destination, down there like that, and then go. Right, pull and drive at the same time. Just go forward a little bit. So you need to go... Re <laughs> now we've run out of fuel. Right, that is it. That is game over. We are done. So we did manage to get down here, but like people have told me, this is a very thirsty beast. I do think that we would actually be able to get through this river eventually. We'd be able to drag the whole little train that we've got. We'd be able to drag it all the way through without any problem. Um, but yeah, as it is, it's not going any further. So next week, I don't actually know what map we're going to go on to next week. Whether we come back to this one and we try some mods on this map or we go to another map. I'm, I, At the moment, I'm not sure. Um, I don't think there are any maps on the Steam Workshop, and I don't really want to go into other mods at the moment because they're more difficult to install. Um, it's more difficult for people who are watching to be able to use the same things that I'm using, and that's the reason that I don't particularly want to do it. Um, so I will try and have a look and see what there is on the Steam Workshop. Suggest maps um, which you'd like to see me, or uh, you know, any particular mods you'd like me to try. I will stick to Steam Workshop for the next couple of weeks. After that, I don't really know. Maybe we'll try something a bit broader. Um, it depends how complicated it is to install the mods. Because you've got to remember, I'm not particularly good at doing it either. Um, but I also want something that um, people watching are easily able to replicate. Because I know that a lot of you do like to use the same mods and stuff that I'm using in order to experience some of the same things. But anyway, that is all we've got time for. So if you enjoyed the episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.